shirt with tough. <laughs> Where's Jay? Jay, get up here. Anybody check with Jay? Welcome. This is uh, a day I didn't expect to see, uh, but uh, the city of Detroit has been returned to an, an investment grade credit rating for the first time in 15 years. Uh, uh, when the emergency manager left in 2014, there were a lot of dire predictions. Detroiters can't be trusted with self-determination, can't run their own finances. What's going to happen now? And what we have done since is 10 credit, what we've done since is 10 credit rating upgrades in less than a decade. It has been uh, nothing but a remarkable uh, run. And I was really pleased to see Moody's in their report cite the 10 years of strong financial management in the city as the reason for this, as well as the fact that the home values in Detroit have doubled uh, in the last five years. Everybody in America is now recognizing the city of Detroit's financial comeback. Um, there are so many people uh, responsible. Our first chief financial officer, John Hill, to Dave Masseron, uh, to our great chief financial officer today, uh, Jay, Re Jay Rising, uh, Tanya Stoudemire, who has been guiding this place for the last uh, 10 years between being budget director and deputy CFO, uh, the whole finance team, and really uh, all of the city departments. Uh, every one of them has had to manage for the last 10 years with uh, financial constraints, and they've done it well. Uh, Detroit City Council has been a partner every step of the way. When we exited bankruptcy, Everybody talked about the pension cliff. The plan of adjustment we were left with by the emergency manager had no means to pay for the retirees' pension fund starting in 2023, $150 million a year. Everybody called it the pension cliff. Detroit was going to fall off the pension cliff. But because the mayor and the city council set aside over that decade $479 million in a retiree protection fund. Money we could have put into police and parks and other things, but we put the retirees first. We were able to meet those obligations uh, without any difficulty. And I think that probably impressed Wall Street uh, as much as uh, anything. And uh, we have to thank the businesses that made this possible. We are in the situation we are in uh, because the income tax revenues have exceeded uh, everyone's expectations. We went from a 20% unemployment rate to an 8% unemployment rate. We got Detroiters paying income taxes. And so uh, Jeep, 
plant was huge. What Ford is doing at the train station, what General Motors has done uh, at Factory Zero and the parts suppliers, what Amazon has done, what Dan Gilbert and Chris Illich and Gary Torgo have done in improving office buildings and housing and moving people in, and what City Council has done in having the courage to approve every one of those projects, all of those things together made this possible. And I don't want to discount what the people of the city of Detroit did in November of 2020. Uh, we still had thousands and thousands of abandoned houses in the neighborhoods, which were depressing our property values. And the fact that the people of the city passed Proposal N with more than 70% of the vote is putting us in a position where the land bank is basically going to be out of abandoned houses by the end of next year. All of those things came together. So uh, before I turn this over uh, to our chief financial officer, Jay Rising, I've got some department heads up here and, and senior staff up here who have for several years, every Wednesday morning at the cabinet meetings, have to put up a little bit of grief from me on their performance levels. And it isn't often that we have a time to say thank you. Uh, but uh, Jay and I would like to pass out now a little souvenir so that you always remember this day. And it's a bottle of black ink celebrating our return uh, <laughs> to an investment grade credit rating. Uh, and it was funny, one of our, our young finance people said, what's so significant about black ink? And I thought, he's only been here 10 years. He doesn't remember the days of red ink. Uh, and that's a great thing. So Jay, let's pass this out uh, to our team. And every time you guys think about how difficult I've been to work for, <laughs> don't say I never gave you anything. <laughs> Nikhil, our treasurer, how long have you been on the job? Six months. Now. Six months. He's claiming credit as a treasurer, but he doesn't really get it for six months. With that, I'll turn it over to our leader, our chief financial officer, Jay Rising. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, three years ago, I was trying to um, start my third retirement. <laughs> and I got a call from a friend who said, don't you want to have some fun? <laughs> And the mayor convinced me to come back to the city and go back to work. Um, and really, with the opportunity, not just of helping our trajectory, which we were on a fine trajectory three years ago. We had seven years of balanced budgets, as he said. But also, I thought, this is an opportunity to provide some guidance on sustainability. To me, the, uh, the rating agencies have upgraded us, evidencing both our performance to date, as well as what they think our performance in the future is going to be. Uh, and that's, I think, what I really care about, which is make institutionalizing all the, all the practices which were well underway when I got here. Um, what I found when I returned was a team of people who I didn't know uh, uh, much about, um, but they were really financial pros, as well as committed operational management and staff who came to work every day trying to make the city a better place for people to live and prosper in. So, you know, this rating, is, I think, is our acknowledgement of our success and of our, of our glide path into the future. And our job really is to continue to make sure we're all pulling the same way uh, into the future where, and we'll continue to get better and better credit and performance. With that, I'll turn it over to back to you. Um, and so the other news that was in the Moody's double upgrade, which is an extreme rarity to get two upgrades in a year, uh, was a positive outlook, which means uh, that they expect if this trend continues that we'll get upgraded again next year. It's pretty remarkable um, that the city of Detroit has higher credit ratings uh, than a lot of other uh, cities in the country, cities we were looking up at uh, for a long time. Uh, but. It was not easy every year when people show up at city council meetings and argue for things that were really urgent needs in a lot of areas, places where we could have put money. But to have the discipline to say, no, uh, we're not going to spend more than we have. We are going to put the money away for our retirees. We're not going to ever have our retirees be in a position where they have their pensions cut again. Uh, and so at this point, I want to introduce two of the partners uh, who have been responsible for that, uh, council members Fred Durhall and Angela Callaway. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, good afternoon to you all. This is a remarkable day. I love this bottle of black ink uh, because it signifies so much. This is really such a historical and remarkable day. Uh, I will first say I remember uh, sitting in the legislature, got elected in the legislature, Michigan legislature, around 2015, and we're just coming out of bankruptcy, and there, were a lot of, there was a lot of skepticism of how Detroit would look 10 years from then. Uh, and as you can see now, we have moved forward tremendously. We're talking since 2009, a upgrade rating, one of the first upgrade ratings to investment status, which is absolutely huge. We talk about the balanced budgets. Uh, and I'd be remiss if I did not say, uh, and the mayor alluded to it, how much political courage that takes. Uh, so the mayor and his amazing team the Office of the Chief Financial Officer. I get the opportunity to work with them every day as the Budget Finance and Audit Standing Committee Chair have just done such a remarkable job. What does this mean for our city? Uh, this means that we are moving forward now. We can invest more in infrastructure. We can have lower, lower interest rates. Uh, and as you've seen in prior press conferences, our property values now are higher than Miami. We are moving forward here in the city of Detroit and it is, it is indicative uh, of our fiscal responsibility. It is indicative of great leadership, but also indicative of the sacrifice that even our residents have made to bring our city back. Uh, a lot of folks say about Detroit, uh, it's remarkable turnaround. We are the phoenix rising from the ashes, as folks will say. Uh, but with this great leadership and the great council we have, we'll, we'll ensure that that phoenix doesn't fly into the window. Uh, <laughs> as we continue to move forward. So I want to thank you, Mayor Duggan, personally, as well as your entire team who worked so hard and diligently for this, as well as the other council members who made this sacrifice for our city, its residents, our retirees, and everyone. And with that, I will turn it over to my amazing colleague from District 2, Member Angela Whitfield Calloway. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, first of all, it's a wonderful th day, and thank you for um, this opportunity, uh, Mayor Duggan, to your incredible team and the team that represents our city. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. Um, and it's been a wonderful last three years. And we, our council is led by one of the most incredible budget men that I know. You do an incredible job. Um, this is a wonderful day, not just for the team, but for the entire city of Detroit. Without sounding um, a bit redundant, um, the, uh, today we can assure our investors that we'll make good on all the bonds we issue and meet our financial obligations. And that is important because even as consumers and individuals, it's important that we meet our financial um, obligations. If not, then there's a negative uh, mark on our credit report. So this is a good day for the city and a good day for our financial um, credit report. This milestone reflects the city's dedication on being physically fiscally responsible and transparent, we can tell our investors and our residents, hey, you can trust us. You can trust us with your finances. And Jay Wisen, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for helping us, helping me and my office digest that budget and understand it. So that being said, um, congratulations, um, Mayor Duggan, to our team, to everyone. And um, this is a great day for the city of Detroit. God bless you. And uh, with that, we'll uh, take any questions. Rod. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, a couple of things that you mentioned here was about other cities. Um, where, where does Detroit now stand as opposed to being at the bottom of the barrel? Yeah, well, we are now the second level up uh, in uh, investment grade. So there are a number of cities uh, that are good cities, well-run cities, uh, that have uh, a credit rating below ours. And next year, uh, we expect to jump up another level. And uh, nobody is now talking about uh, poor Detroit. Uh, now other people in the country are talking about uh, what did they do. And the other thing I know that impressed Wall Street is we got $827 million in American Rescue Plan money from the federal government. Most cities in America took a good chunk or all of their federal money and put it into their budget to balance their budget. The city of Detroit didn't put a dollar into balancing our budget because we're already balanced. Uh, we put those investments into our parks, into our rec centers, into our uh, folks 
uh, and really, I think it's going to accelerate uh, Detroit's growth um, by 10 years. And when we pitch the rating agencies, they can't get their minds around the fact uh, that Detroit didn't spend any of that federal money uh, to balance the budget. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to pick on other cities, uh, but um, if you do a little bit of research, you'll f you'll be surprised that some of the cities that are now below us in credit rating. You talked about when, at the budget meeting a couple of weeks ago. You mentioned that you thought there would be an upgrade, but two two picks <laughs> is a, a big surprise. What, what was your reaction to that? What do you think that means to the residents of the city? Well. My presentations to the rating agencies the last couple of years have been a little tense uh, because I show them what we have done, and by any objective measure, we should have been higher. So in uh, 22, I told them we deserved a double upgrade, and they gave us one. In 23, I told, us we des told them we deserved a double upgrade, and they gave us one. This year, uh, I didn't even ask for the double upgrade, but I think they realized it was long overdue. So uh, I think there was some of this, we can't believe our eyes. They really thought in 2023, when we had the new $150 million pension obligations, Detroit was going to be in trouble. And now we balance the budget in 2023 with no problem, balancing again in 2024 with no problem. I think uh, there is just a lot of confidence uh, in the way uh, that we are operating, and, and you can't, uh, you know, I, we did in our presentation, showed them the headlines from Miami and San Diego saying that they had the highest growth in property values in America except for Detroit. Uh, when the Miami and San Diego papers are celebrating Detroit's growth in home values, uh, there is a different uh, perception around the country about how we're doing Uh, Jay? Yeah. So, first on your first question, the $20 million we show on the website is unprogrammed. We know where that's going. We just need to ask council as the project's mature and ready to go, be obligated to transfer funds from one appropriation to another. So we're not showing on the website, we're not presuming council's action at all, um, but we know there's affordable housing projects and housing uh, activities we want to support and we'll be coming to council with that request and that that time we show the full amount obligated um, for, you know for us to me at least for the credit rating upgrade means it's you know, I always see the next challenge and the, every year I think there's opportunity to improve and I think this credit rating and the positive as upgrade uh, outlook as the mayor said is our indication that more is possible uh, and we want we want to do more. We want to make sure that they understand that we look at our budgets uh, to actuals on a monthly basis. We're very cognizant of our financial performance, and we're committed to maintaining stability uh, in our finances. So, does this mean that um, with this grade, does it mean that you pay lower cost to borrow funds? Yes, okay. it will. Um, so the benefit kind of rolls right to the to the taxpayers. Um, it's our ability to both increase values of the properties in the city, allow us to lower our debt bills. Our ability to, um, to improve our credit ratings, lowers our interest rates and future borrowings, um, or any refinancing. So we're saving more, more, more tax dollars for the taxpayers. Well, there's no doubt. All, all over America, uh, projects are moving from office to housing. People work in a different way. They take less space. I thought what um, uh, Stephen Ross and the team did made perfect sense. They had 10 projects. Two of them were office buildings. The other eight were uh, apartments and hotels. They're moving forward on the apartments and hotels first, 
until the office demand uh, builds back up. I think it makes absolutely perfect sense. Uh, and you're seeing it all over downtown. Uh, with the exception of the Huntington headquarters, uh, pretty much everything that's going up right now uh, is apartments and hotels. And I love that. Downtown is becoming a neighborhood. Come down here on a Friday night, a Saturday or Sunday, the Detroit I grew up in, uh, there was nobody on the street in, on Saturday or Sunday or on a night. People all went home at 530 because it was an office town. Now uh, it is a vibrant uh, neighborhood where people live. And uh, the amount of housing units, I mean, the huge number of housing units being built right now uh, in the downtown area. And I'm thrilled with what Stephen Ross is doing. Anything else? All right. Oh, go ahead, Dana. I think we're in good shape. Uh, so at one point, the land bank owned uh, 4,500. Uh, I mean, at one point, they owned 45,000 vacant houses. Uh, this week, they're down to 4,500. Uh, they're going to be down close to 2,000 uh, by the end of this year, and I'm very hopeful the land bank owns zero vacant houses by the end of 2025. We've got the money uh, in the uh, budget from Proposal N to take care of the residential side, the land bank houses. Uh, and we've used American Rescue Plan money to take down uh, the uh, Packard plant that came from the state of Michigan, from the YMCA on East Jefferson, uh, and many of the other uh, blighted properties. I look at the folks at the Kojic Church on Jefferson, across from where I live, and for 20 years, they've been going to church every Sunday next to a huge abandoned a YMCA with trees growing out of the roof. Uh, this last Sunday, they got to go to church uh, without that shadow hanging over them, and that's happening in neighborhood uh, after neighborhood. Yeah? Uh, what would you like to see on the land that the YMCA is on? Yeah, we're going to talk to the church, and I think that deserves to be the first conversation with the number of years they put up with it, and whether the church has some ideas and some plans, and we will, uh, we will work from there. So we've been talking... Uh, to uh, Bishop Hicks uh, for some time about this. And I think today, uh, that, what I feel so bad about is Bishop Brooks, the Bishop P.A. Brooks has been a legend of this town, and my dear friend, when I ran for mayor in 2013, I promised him I would get that down. Now, we had to sue some nonprofit in Texas. It took years. Conrad Mallet finally won the case. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, Bishop Brooks passed before he could see it. Um, but that's how long... Uh, that the uh, church has been having uh, to deal with that eyesore, and I think the church ought to have first opportunity to express their opinion on what we do. Anything else? Thank you all very much for being here.